Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Pink Boy time, like always, XRP day. Enjoy with us the global future. XRP, like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, has been volatile. I asked Brad if the message to investors is don't use XRP to speculate. People are going to speculate on different asset classes. People speculate on gold, currencies, uh, you, mean, you name it, people are going to speculate. When we think about this, and the, what I've said very publicly, is I think the long-term value of any digital asset is going to be derived from the utility it delivers. There is a lot of hype in the crypto market space. Uh, you know, we've seen that even recently, you know, we, we a lot of attention around what's going on with Libra and Facebook's uh, announcement around Libra. Today, that's just a white paper. It actually isn't, it isn't live, it hasn't launched. And it, you know, so I, I think the, the hype often ha gets ahead of reality in many technologies. And I think that's true in the crypto space as well. What I would encourage any, any person looking at this marketplace is to really understand what is real, what is not real, and understand, is there a use case? Is there a utility? Bitcoin, I'm long Bitcoin, and Bitcoin I think has real utility around being a store of value. It's digital gold. But if a Bitcoin transaction takes on average 12 minutes to confirm and the transaction cost is over $1 per transaction, that's not gonna be great for a payments solution. So around payments, we think XRP is uniquely and extremely well positioned to solve that payments problem. It's extremely fast at about three seconds per transaction and it costs about a thousandth of a penny to actually enable that transaction. So we often make the point that well, where Bitcoin is very profound in solving that store of value an XRP transaction's about a thousand times faster and it's about a thousand times cheaper per transaction. I saw some uh, Twitter traffic, one in particular, Crypto Bitlord, that threatened to take over um, because they say that, that you, the company, is dumping, that you're pushing supply out to the market. Can you explain to me the difference between XRP and, and Bitcoin with regards supply? And with regards sure. to how much ownership Ripple itself actually has as a proportion of XRP out there at this moment. Okay, so th the first thing to understand is these are all open source technologies. When people talk about you know forking technologies, you have seen Bitcoin forked multiple times. You have Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin uh, BSV, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Diamond, Bitcoin. I can't name them all. There's four or five forks of the Bitcoin blockchain. Bitcoin, obviously, the primary BTC has remained kind of the, the, the most notable. But in the same way, people can take XRP and open source technology and hypothetically, they could fork that if they chose to do so. Now, around the ownership piece, as is the case with Bitcoin, there's some big whales that were early in the Bitcoin community. Uh, you know, there's one wallet that has a million Bitcoin in it. Nobody knows who owns it. In the XRP community, Ripple is the largest owner. And the point I have made is we are the most interested party in the success of the XRP ecosystem. We're very focused on our use case and how do we solve problems with XRP. But what, one of the things I'm excited about is you're seeing a growing ecosystem of other players investing in other use cases around XRP. Just recently, we announced a partnership with Coil, which is doing micropayments for content. So next time you're reading a story on the Financial Times website and you hit that paywall, you hypothetically just pay, hey, here's a, here's a dime, here's a quarter, here's 50 cents. Where today, you know, that's a pretty hard problem. And it, companies like Coil are gonna use XRP for those micropayment transactions. So yes, Ripple owns a lot of XRP. We're very interested in the success of XRP, but uh, the, the accusations of us dumping, you know, that's not in our best interest to do that. You know, we're clearly interested in a, a healthy, successful ecosystem. And so we would never do that. And in fact, have taken steps to lock up most of the XRP we own in escrow such that we can't touch it. Interesting. So, but you agree that you can control the price to some degree because ultimately oh, no. the, the Ripple community has so much power, no? No, I mean, if you look at the correlations between XRP and most of the crypto market, or what are often called the altcoins, you see a very high degree of correlation. You know, uh, Ripple can't control the price of XRP any more than, uh, you know, what, the whales can control the price of Bitcoin. You know, some of these markets, particularly smaller tokens that are, you know, have a lower market cap and lower float, if you will, uh, you know, they are at risk of people manipulating them. But, you know, you're talking about 
XRP trades, you know, order of magnitude, a billion dollars, according to coin market cap, it trades, you know, an order of magnitude, a billion dollars a day of activity. So I, I don't think anybody's in a position to really manipulate those prices. It's quite funny. One of the big questions that I was asked when I was talking to people about XRP, they said, what price do you sell XRP to, to the financial institutions that you're dealing with here? Do you, div do you give them a discount and, and is there a lockup? Can you answer those questions? Because this kept coming up. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, let's use MoneyGram as the example. When MoneyGram is moving money from U.S. dollar to Mexican peso, they're buying at market. They're, they're not, there's no you know, special sweetheart deal there. There are times when we work with institutional investors who might say, hey, we want to buy $10 million of XRP, and we would have lockups that would prevent them from dumping. You know, we don't want some other party buying a whole lot of XRP and dumping it on the market. And so we would hypothetically have restrictions about what they could sell and, and what, uh, you know, how, how often. And usually those are based upon volume in the market. Yeah, so you, you might give them it slightly cheaper, but you say to them, hey, you're not allowed to sell it for six months, let's say, or a year. Yeah, correct. That, that's basically yeah. correct. So just at a time when cryptocurrency investments are battling to become more mainstream, a behemoth facing some skepticism on its own part is trying to enter the space. Facebook announced plans to launch its own cryptocurrency recently, Libra. Now their scale could be potent. Could that be a bad thing or a good thing though going forward? I ask Brad that very question. I think it's been net good for the industry to bring the attention that Libra has brought on the industry. I think that part of the, the maturation of the industry is that transparency and that, that debate, that healthy debate. And so net net, I think it's been a good thing. I think it's way too early to predict exactly what the implications are going to be. You know, Facebook obviously is a consumer oriented company, came out and talked about how they're more aggressively competing with financial institutions. They highlighted Western Union as an example. And so our view is, hey, we can, we can partner with those financial institutions and help them solve a problem at scale that we, we've talked about here. So I think it's too early to tell. I think Facebook came out in a way that uh, probably wasn't as engaging to regulators as maybe they could have been, and that stirred up a lot of concern. And uh, we've made the point that we shouldn't paint the entire crypto industry with a broad brush. There's different types of projects. Some are trying to be very regulatory compliant, like what Ripple is doing with XRP. There's also some that are trying to circumvent regulators, uh, things like Monero that are intentionally trying to be, you know, they're about anonymity. And so I, I think, you know, the, as regulators look at the category, they just need to be thoughtful about not painting it with one broad brush. And that's really what we've tried to emphasize. The CEO of Ripple.